Hi everybody, uh, Skip Sheehan from 16 Wells. Uh, we've had some changes in ClickFunnels with the way that um, you incorporate the button registrations from Webinar Jam. And so I just wanted to reshoot the prior training that I had done um, that I'm just gonna take the perfect webinar uh, registration example that comes with ClickFunnels and show you how you can replace this button here that does the drop down for your you know registration and everything with the webinar jam registration uh, funnel. So what I'm gonna do here is just copy the, the page URL, I'm putting that in there and clicking confirm and what I need to end up with is um, the button code of course that's gonna be at the end of the whole thing. Okay. So just to save time, I skip to the end of those steps because Webinar Jam doesn't just give us a quick way of doing that. But when you say you're registering on your own page, what you end up with at the end is this kind of, you know, this embed code that is your button. Okay, so I select that. And then I'm gonna come back into here. And this is the pop-up button that comes by default with ClickFunnels, but that's not actually what I want. What I want is in here, the custom HTML JavaScript. Where do they put it? There it is. So they call it custom JS HTML now. Okay, and when I put that in there, you'll see this little orange box in there. So what I do is come click that, come in here, and then I'm just gonna paste that code in here all at once. Okay, so if I click save on that, and refresh the page. It now gives me the button right there that when I click it does the the pop. Okay now that may or may not be exactly the way you want it to work. Um, you know I think some other things you might want to do is consider the CSS styling on this. So if I wanted it to look just like the other one what I would do is right click it and do inspect. You can see that th this is in Chrome, by the way. It might be a little bit different if you're in Safari or Firefox. Um, and if you're using Microsoft Edge or IE, stop and use one of the other ones. Um, so what I'm gonna do is look in here and see sort of what the CSS elements are. Okay, this is an embedded join webinar button. And I, you know, I basically can come in and find the CSS specs for if I do this button, it'll show them to me over here and I can see that this is the color. So if I just look at one quick change that I could do on the color, I could come in here and say, instead of that, I could do the background, the RGB is this. Now I need to figure out where register, where button.css3 button is. Okay, so what I would do with that is come into here and then after I've hit save so that it saves the button on the page, I'm gonna go to settings, custom CSS, okay, and then um, down here, I'm gonna do button CSS3 button, put some curly brackets in there, I'm gonna do background color, and it, it, this sort of just requires you learning some of these you know, the nomenclature of how this goes, but this RGB code is the color of this blue. Okay, so I put that in there, put a semicolon at the end in case I do something else later. Hit save, and now it should be in there even when I refresh it. See, so that's, and now it's still got a hover color on there. That's this button CSS3 button hover. So if I wanted that to be something completely different, I could just change that color and then this element here at the end is what I would do in there. So if I, just so you know how this works, I'll finish the thought. If I did that with the hover elements in there, it would be, um, and I, you know, I'll just put red in there just as an example here. So I hit save and that's it. Now when I hover only, it should be red. And it looks like maybe it's caching. You know, everybody knows that this can take a few minutes for it to come through. But on hover, that should turn red now when it um, finishes clearing out the cache and everything like that. So 
I hope this helps. It's really just, in some ways, they made it a lot simpler because with the last video that I did, the, job, the custom JavaScript and the custom HTML blocks were two different blocks. But really all you need to do with this improved way of doing things is just drop that code right in here the way that it is, and that should be enough. So if you have any other questions, um, feel free to uh, just comment alongside of wherever this happens to be posted, or you can email me if you'd like, skip at 16wells.com. That's 16-W-E-L-L-S.com, and I hope this helps you out. Thanks.